All right, Aries, welcome to your November of 2015 Sidereal Astrology Forecast. My name is Athen. So this is for Sidereal. If you're new to this type of astrology, do check the description down below because your sign might be different. And what I'm going to start doing now for these monthlies is uh, just talk about the house changes that are taking place with the planets as well as any major aspects. I'm not going to go into detail of all the minor aspects like I was doing in the previous monthlies. It gets quite cluttered and there's a lot of information, so uh, this will keep it nice and simple. It'll keep it in terms of the major theme of the month. And then if you want more specific information on the aspects, uh, do check your weekly for that particular week. So Aries, let's have a look. So uh, this month, the first half of the month really has a lot of uh, sextiles and trines um, involving the sun and Mercury, who's, who's been transiting your sixth house. And this is where you had that last... Um, lunar cycle was in regards to your sixth house. So the sixth house is about uh, routine, it's about health, diet, essentially anything that's about like self-improvement or improving our crafts in life. And uh, the focus I think is still going to be here coming into this month. Uh, there is this uh, reflection or this sort of, um, you know, applicable concept understanding about these things could be quite busy for you for some of you um, and that might the busyness might actually increase too because uh, your ruler Mars is actually going into that sixth here right at the beginning of the month in fact Mars is going to be conjoining up to uh, Venus and uh, that conjunction right when they go conjunct as you can see they enter Virgo into your sixth so what's real nice about this is that you guys should be feeling good, looking good, a conjunction between the uh, natal ruler or the chart ruler and Venus is um, it's quite sensual, or at least there can be an enjoyment. It could be good for relationships, one-on-one -on -one connections. Venus does rule your seventh house. There's a lot of shifts about relationships this month, which I'll talk about. But right at the beginning, from the first through the fourth, enjoy it, you know, feel good, look good, uh, you know get a haircut, makeover, things like that, I think you'll just feel lively about. I think you can enjoy and um, connecting to new and existing relationships as well. But it's all happening in the area of your work environment. So it could be uh, new connections at work. It could be enjoying your work with Venus here, very motivated to pursue your work or anything that you do on a daily level, whether it's, you know, health stuff, your health regiment, um, your, uh, you know, routine, basically. So that's right at the beginning. Then on the 5th, uh, the sun goes into your 7th. So this is where things start to shift in regards to relationships pretty early in the month, actually. A good focus here. One-on-one uh, -on -one connections, partnerships. It could be business partnerships. Uh, it could be romantic relationships. It could be friends. It could be any type of one-on-one -on -one connection, whether it's you know friend, romantic, family, or otherwise. I think that's where the focus is naturally going to be. For those of you that are involved in like business or sales, things like that, I think maybe a greater emphasis and focus on those things also. Then on the 10th, Mercury joins up uh, with the sun to go into that seventh house. And this is where the uh, planet of those daily spheres now take place with the uh, with the relationship. So again, there's this really strong synergy when it's about the daily activities and then the relationships, one-on-one -on -one connections. Again, it could be relationships at work. It could be self-improvement um, with relationships and that kind of energy. But um, at the very least, I think your mind is just naturally going to be going into wanting to have more of those one-on-one -on -one connections. And as you can see, you know, here's all those trines and sextiles that are going to be taking place <clears throat> this early part of the month the first half of the month involving um, the Sun and Mercury in particular. Now, uh, on the 11th, we're going to have that new moon, and that's going to be in that 7th. So now for the next uh, few weeks in regards to this, but also in the next six months, you guys have new beginnings involving one-on-one -on -one connections. Again, it could be new ones, it could be existing ones, a new take, a new perspective, on this area of your life. So it's a good time around the 11th to plant seeds, you know, connect all of that because uh, these new beginnings are going to culminate over the short term and the long term in regards to this area. Now, um, so the sextiles trends continue. Then on the 18th, uh, one thing I want to say too about this early part of the month from the 1st to the 8th, this is a somewhat uh, major aspect. Um, we're going to have Jupiter posing up to Chiron. Okay, so there's still, I want to say there's still a lot of energy for you guys to express yourself, to uh, connect on a sort of creative level, whether it's creativity at work, whether it's uh, hobbies, whether it's uh, could be romantic for some of you. Jupiter's really been expanding um, your fifth house of creation. So whatever that's been, um, he is going to be opposing up to Chiron this early part of the month. 
So with Chiron, it's all about healing. So if you're feeling any, you know, the early part of the month, if you're feeling any wounds around self-expression, around your creative creativity, things like that, it could be actually a very positive thing because Jupiter tends to see the bright side of it, you know, the overview of it. And Chiron is always healing us for the be better. So by being open to that and also seeing too that if there is anything that's group related right now or anything involving friends or networking, things like that, maybe there are some wounds around that. But the key here is that when you're expressing yourself in a way that is focused on giving to others, focused on what's best for the group or whatever, then there's a nice harmony and a nice balance between them. And through that, I think by the 8th, there is this healing taking place, both on that 11th house of, you know, groups and the personal house, the 5th house of your self-expression. Okay. But again, it's expansion, it's Jupiter, it's helping with all these opportunities that are taking place for you to express, express yourself for the next, you know, many months. All right, so let's talk about the uh, second half of the month now. On the 18th, we've got a um, Neptune going station direct. And when Neptune goes station direct, um, he's going to square up to Saturn, okay? So this is, you know, all the way for the rest of the month. And it's in fact, it's going even into December. This one's going to go exact on the 26th. But what's so interesting is that, you know, with Neptune, right when Neptune goes direct, he squares Saturn. So there's been this reflection, perhaps, about these um, uncertainties about your ideals, your visions, the groups, the networking, anything involving an organization, things like that, which is also that Chiron he healing energy. But with Neptune, it is this uncertainty about it. And with Saturn, it's very concretely the things that we're building. It's for the future. It's like our long-term goals and things like that. So we all have this sort of haze around how things are unfolding in the big picture from the 18th onward. And uh, for you, it's it's about these solid foundations that hope, hopefully you're starting to implement with what's really meaningful to you in life. Saturn has just recently gone into Scorpio last month. So there's this whole new cycle now, these next couple of years of setting solid foundations with deeper connections, a deeper connection to relationships, to your work, to your family, pretty much any area of life that you feel is meaningful to you. And having that openness, vulnerability, all of that kind of stuff that sets the foundation for the other areas of your life. For some of you, it could be very tangible. It could be that you're working with shared resources, working with debts, removing yourself from debts, unhealthy relationships, whatever. But it's got to be meaningful. It's got to be raw. And that's the foundation. Now, with that, there's uncertainty about it this later part of the month or there's some confusion, perhaps. But the key here with this is that Neptune is helping us see the importance of the uncertainty, the faith, the trust, and all of that being something that we can relax into. Neptune's been a very major player this uh, second half of the year, actually. And this is certainly no exception because um, it is involving this uh, very important Saturn transit. So uh, my best advice with that is with anything that's uncertain around the organizations, the groups, um, and you know, particularly with the deeper connections that you're having in life, it's about having that compassion. It's about having that uncertainty, that presence, that meditation that is so important. And in that way, it becomes construct constructive with the square. So um, on the 26th, though, when that goes, you know, up until the 26th, you know, work at it because it's still new. It's a new transit and, um, you know, it's, it is uncertainty, but the greater we're able to work with uncertainty, the better. And again, Saturn's all about that patience and, and that kind of energy anyways. So that's from the 18th onward. Then on the 21st, we do have uh, Mercury going into Scorpio. And so Mercury, you know, uh, our thoughts and thinking and communications, I think those areas are just naturally going to be deeper for you. I think at this point, you're just naturally going to be thinking deeper on a deeper level, what the truth is about life, what's really meaningful, uh, maybe communicating, the, you know, the openness, the vulnerability of yourself, seeing that working with it. And that's a great way to work with, with Mercury is in a very tangible, very practical sort of way. OK, and again, this could be that maybe you're thinking about the shared resources. It could be that there's um, deeper connections happening in those relationships that started earlier in the month, perhaps things like that. And of course, it will be different for each of you. Then on the 24th, the sun goes into that eighth house. So there is this illumination. There's this awareness and then focus on those deeper uh, relationships uh, or you know deeper areas of life from the 24th onward, really expressing the truth here, you know, expressing the um, what's behind the veil, whether it's with yourself wanting to focus on that, express that, or maybe it's collectively, maybe it's with what's going on in the world, things like that. It's a very deep, very transformational part of the chart. 
and maybe even facing fears, you know, a lot of times too, which is again, oftentimes when we go deeper with things. All right, and then on the 25th, we got a full moon in Taurus. So this is your second house. Now this is a culmination of over the past six months in particular around your finances or material stuff. So for those of you who've been working hard on the material aspects of life or focused on it, or you've been sort of pursuing your values really strongly for the past six months, this is a culminating point of that. It could also be the culminating point of the past couple of weeks. But um, at the very least, you're seeing them very illuminated. You're seeing the importance of having that uh, good meal, the incense, the nice smells, the aroma, all of the beauties of life, the sensual pleasures of life, and how important they are in regards to these more, you know, deeper things. Because uh, with all this in your eighth house, this is balancing it out. When you are connecting to nature, you are getting that, you know, that relaxation and, and good, um, you know, physical material enjoyment, then um, it does tend to balance that. So it's a good it's a good second half of the month to see what are your values on a physical level as well as what are your values on a non-physical level, balancing those two and really seeing that they're really not very different. And um, the more you have this sort of non-attachment about them too, actually, which is the eighth house, non-attachment then it's having that much more gratitude, that much more appreciation and awareness of what you do have in your life in regards to those values. But at the very least, it's an awareness of that. So seeing that, appreciating that, uh, but it could be a culmination of anything on that material plane for a lot of you. And uh, this full moon is actually going to be forming a T-square from this, uh, well, in this case, it will be considered an opposition up to Mercury and Saturn. Mercury will be very close to Saturn and the Sun as well. So it's all about patience. It's all about this sort of pragmatic approach to things in regards to it. Maybe it's not, you know, for example, completely in fruition just yet. It could be. It just depends on your personal chart. But there's something that's saying that it, it involves, again, this uncertainty with Neptune, not knowing exactly how it's going, but that can be a positive thing as well as uh, many hard work that you feel like you can continuously improve on or work with uh, regarding both the material and non-material values of your life. And uh, constructively, when you work at it, you know, when you have that, again, gratitude, which is Neptune as well, um, then it becomes very constructive. And with Saturn, it becomes very productive in that sense when you're open to this uh, configuration, when you're, work you're open to working hard, basically, with Saturn, and you're open to going with the flow with Neptune. All right, so that's the 25th. And then on the 28th, we do have Chiron going station direct. Uh, so that's going to be in that 11th house. So there are things starting to move forward for you, uh, just like with Neptune in regards to those organizations, the group stuff, networking, friends. If you've been feeling like that stuff's been on the back burner or sort of a reflective time or non-existent in the past six months, um, that energy starts to move forward, which is nice. And then to top off the month on the 29th, we do have um, Mercury going into a fucus. So still your eighth house. But here's where it becomes more about the transmutation, the healing, uh, taking things to the next level in terms of really being aware of uh, not only what the deeper aspects of life are, but how to work with them. OK, and this is going to be the energy that's going to take you into um, into next month, uh, starting with Mercury and then the sun and the other planets eventually. All right, Aries. Well, I hope you guys have a great month. If you have any questions, please do let me know and I will see you all next time. Take care.